What's going on guys? It's Jimmy here with your $1,400 third stimulus check package update as well as the $3,000 to $3,600 child stimulus checks that are included in addition in this third stimulus check package. We have some shocking news about former President Donald Trump that he is not very happy about, as well as we're going to hear from the White House on the third stimulus check package and a vote that just happened on the third stimulus check package with some breaking new details that is actually very good. And I'm going to give you all the details of it in this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on new updates on the third stimulus check package, as well as the other things we cover on this channel, such as $10,000 or more in student loan forgiveness that is becoming a very real reality, and $200 per month social security increases, along with mortgage and rental assistance, property tax assistance, and all the different buckets of money you can get from this stimulus check package, as well as the next stimulus package that has already been announced. And if you can give this video a like, it really helps out our channel. Former President Donald Trump is not very happy today as he was ordered to hand over his tax returns to prosecutors. The Supreme Court ruled today and will not block the releasing of President Donald Trump's tax returns to a New York prosecutor as a Manhattan District Attorney Cyrus Vance has been trying for months to obtain eight years worth of former President Donald Trump's personal and corporate tax returns. Mr. Vance has been investigating allegations surrounding the payments of, quote, hush money before the 2016 presidential election of two women who they said had relations with President Donald Trump. And, well, it's safe to say that President Donald, former President Donald Trump is not very happy about this. He lashed out in a new statement today that says, well, basically, uh, he's not very happy and this should have never taken place in the first place. Donald Trump says this investigation is a continuation of the greatest political witch hunt in the history of our country. Whether it was the never-ending $32 million Mueller hoax, which already investigated everything that could possibly investigate it, Russia, 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 where there was finding of no collusion, or two ridiculous, quote, crazy Nancy-inspired impeachment attempts that I was found not guilty, it just never ends. So now, for more than two years, New York City has been looking at almost every transaction I've ever done, including seeking tax returns, which were done by among the biggest and most prestigious law firms and accounting firms in the U.S. The Tea Party was treated far better by the IRS than Donald Trump. The Supreme Court never should have let this, quote, fishing expedition happen, but they did. This is something which has never happened to a president before. It is all Democrat-inspired in a totally Democratic location, New York City and state, completely controlled and dominated by a heavily reported enemy of mine, Governor Andrew Cuomo. These are attacks by Democrats willing to do anything to stop almost 75 million people, the most votes by far ever gotten by a sitting president who voted for me in the election, an election which many people and experts feel that I won. I agree. The new phenomenon of, quote, headhunting prosecutors and attorney generals who take down their political opponents by using the law as a weapon is a threat to the very foundation of our liberty. That's what is done in third world countries. Even worse are those who run for prosecutorial or attorney general offices in far left states and jurisdictions pledging to take out a political opponent. That's fascism not justice. And this is exactly what they're trying to do with respect to me. Except that people of our country won't stand for it. In the meantime, violent crime is up in New York City by record numbers and nothing is being done about it. Our elected officials don't care. All they focus on is the persecution of President Donald J. Trump. I will fight on just as I have for the last five years, even before I was successfully elected despite all of the election crimes that were committed against me. We will win. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, because, yeah, it, it is kind of true that it's never ending. 
It's kind of crazy. Now, in all fairness, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, President Donald Trump, former President Donald Trump, is the only president since Ronald Reagan to not release his tax returns, and he hasn't released them now for four to five years since he's been in, in office. So it, it does kind of beg the question, why doesn't he release them when every other president has? So it does make you think that there's something he doesn't want public there, whether it's he makes less money than people think, or he makes more money than people think, or he has more debt than people think, or there's something he wants to hide in there. Um, if it becomes public, this is not necessarily the case that these will be become public, but if they do become public, uh, it will be quite the scandal because I'm sure that the media will rip it apart line by line and find anything possible they can in there. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Next, let's go to White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki, who ordered some questions directly on the third stimulus check package. And then we will go to the vote that just happened today. Bill, um, the president talked a little while ago about it and noted that there are some concerns about the size of the price tag and asked, you know, what would you expect? Would the White House be okay if it went north of $1.9 trillion for whatever reason? Well, I think I've, the president proposed the $1.9 trillion size because he felt that was the, those were the components that were needed to meet the moment we're facing. Uh, and uh, certainly, uh, you know, he looks to Congress to negotiate through what can be added or subtracted from that package. But uh, he has the, had the key priority components in it because that's what he felt would meet the moment. That's what health and economic experts were telling him. But uh, I don't have anything more for you beyond the beyond what he proposed. I just want to go pick on, on what Ed was saying here. Because sure. The president just said that uh, he sort of seemed to put the ball on Republicans for. He mm -hmm. said critics are saying that the plan is too big. What would you have me cut? What would you have me leave out? What is he willing to cut? Is he willing to leave out? And what specifically is the ball? If, if they're going to come to the table and make some offers, what, what's the negotiating topic? We'll there? see what they offer. Uh, you know, what, what has been offered uh, to date uh, was a proposal of about $600 billion, which falls far, far short of what uh, is needed at this point in time with dual crises that the country is facing. Um, he was making the point, and he did something similar in his remarks on Friday, that, uh, you know, this is a difficult time the country is facing. Uh, that's why 400 mayors have come out and said they support this package. That's why Democratic and Republican governors have come out and said that. Business leaders, others, that's why the majority of the American people support it. So the point he's making, he wasn't offering a negotiation. He was making the point that the key components of this bill are addressing the crisis we're facing. So would you cut funding for schools? Would only half of the schools that need funding get funding? Would only half of the people who uh, are uninsured, or uh, sorry, need, uh, uh, you know, deserve to direct, direct checks, should only half of them get them? You know, the point he's making is that um, the size of the package is a reflection of the size of the crisis. And you mentioned uh, at the top of your remarks the, the grim milestone that the country is facing today with these 500,000 deaths. Um, as the country is in this moment of reflection, 100,000 of, of those Americans have died within the last month. Um, what reflections is this White House having on, on the last month? Um, as we ask as a country, could more have been done? As Dr. Fauci said today, it didn't have to be this bad. Could more have been done in the last month also? Well, I think we, uh, one, inherited um, a circumstance where there was not a, uh, there were not enough vaccines ordered. There were not enough vaccinators available to vaccinate Americans, and there were not enough places to, uh, for people to go uh, to get those vaccines um, shot into their arms. And, uh, you know, you can always look back and say, we wish we would have done this better. We wish the storm wouldn't have come. Uh, but our focus is on building out of the hole that we inherited and ensuring that we are taking every step necessary, every step possible uh, to reach people in their communities, to tap into uh, the manufacturing sector through the DPA, to communicate effectively about eligibility. Uh, and that's, that's what our focus is in on at this point in time, the path forward. Uh, go ahead, Caitlin. A few questions for you. One on the COVID relief bill. Senator Bernie Sanders said he does believe that the parliamentarian is going to rule that $15 minimum wage can be in there. But given two Democrats have said they do not want it in there and they don't want to vote for it if it's in there, if they rule that it can be in there, does President Biden still want it included? 
Well, the, the president would not have included an increase in the minimum wage if he did not want to see it in the final package. Uh, and certainly we are in close touch with Senator Sanders and his team, and we hope uh, that he's right and that it is included in the package. Uh, but uh, we'll see what the parliamentarian says. Uh, that process, as you noted, Caitlin, is underway now, uh, the birdbath, as they call it, my favorite term of the week. And uh, we'll see what comes out on the other end. And then what it looks like for members of Congress and who have expressed support or, or opposition to it, they'll have to make a decision at that point in time. But the stage we're at right now is it needs to go through the parliamentary process. Okay. Has the White House reached out to any Republicans who have not yet said how they're going to Vote. We have been working the phones in touch with uh, Democrats and Republicans and their offices through the course of the weekend. And that also on the COVID bill, um, a CBO analysis uh, suggested that only a small portion of the $130 billion for schools would actually be spent in the current fiscal year. Mm -hmm. What exactly is the White House doing to ensure that money would actually mean that schools could potentially open in March and April before the academic year ends? Well, a, a big part of the challenge here for a number of schools is that uh, they need, in order to operate responsibly and given the threat of budget cuts, they need to obligate funds according to spending plans rather than exhausting all balances as soon as they're received. So the challenge here is how do they plan ahead, right? They can hire if they need to hire additional teachers now for smaller class sizes or if they need to hire um, bus drivers or if they need to hire, they need to do um, improvements to their facilities. Uh, they want to be able to know, uh, understandably, just like any business or company, that they will be able to employ teachers next year and the year ahead. So uh, that's why this funding is so essential is because they need to be able to plan ahead so that they can make the improvements now, do the hiring now. Next up in a crucial vote, the U.S. House of Representatives just passed the third stimulus check package. The House Budget Committee uh, late on Monday, just a few moments ago, advanced President Biden's $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill on a vote 19 to 16 across party lines with Democrats voting yes and 16 Republicans voting no. Or again, as you can see here, the U.S. House Budget Committee approved the Democrats' $1.9 trillion COVID financial relief package on Monday with a vote 19 to 16. The measure now heads to the full House of Representatives, which they will vote on. This appears to be a last final vote that they needed to have happen in the House Budget Committee before it can go to a final vote in the U.S. House of Representatives. It did pass today with a vote of 19 to 16, and the measure now heads to the full U.S. House of Representatives. And again, all these extra votes are kind of part of the reconciliation process that needs to be done and the subcommittee process that needs to be done before the vote can go to uh, the or the bill can go to the final vote on the U.S. House of Representatives. So the good news is, is that they have advanced it one more time. One more process is done that needed to be done. And they can now send it, the final bill, to the floor of the U.S. House of Representatives, which will happen this week and should pass hopefully, fingers crossed, the U.S. House of Representatives, and then we'll go to the Senate and then the president's desk. So they are actually doing something in Congress. <laughs> They've been passing it on the subcommittee and now this House Budget Committee, and it is now ready for the final approval to go to the vote in the third stimulus check package in the U.S. House of Representatives. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on new updates and details on the third stimulus check package and when it fully passes, when it will hit your bank account, as well as things in the future that I will be helping you with, such as student loan forgiveness that is probably going to happen with at least $10,000, social security increases of a possible $200 per month, the money you can claim from the third stimulus check package in addition to the $1,400, such as the $3,000 to $3,600 child tax stimulus checks that are going to come out in monthly form of $250 to $300 per month, as well as mortgage and rental assistance, utility assistance, property tax assistance, and 
possible stimulus checks coming more on the state level, such as the ones we just seen in California and Maryland, because states will be getting $350 billion more. So we'll likely see more of those in the future. I will be updating you on all of these different stimulus buckets of money. So make sure to subscribe, share this video with your family and friends so that they know what is going on with these also. I won't be having an 11 p.m. video tonight because tonight is my last night in my 30s as tomorrow is my birthday, so I'm taking the rest of the night off. But you can click this top video here to watch my newest stimulus check video next. And this video teaches you how to start your own business selling products on Amazon FBA. I have dozens of students that have replaced their nine to five income selling products on Amazon, and I teach them how to do that. Click on one of those videos to watch them next. Thanks guys, and I will see you in the next video.